Hey everybody, Jake here from Bearded Gear, and I am ready to do my first impressions on this sweet little blade. Um, this is the Pina Knives X-Series Apache. Um, X-Series with Pina Knives means that it is a production version. They are manufactured by Riat Knives, and uh, it is a <laughs> sweet little front flipper. So I have recently um, been, I guess you could almost say, kind of on a kick of like traditional pattern knives. Not that I've had a ton of them, but I've had two. <laughs> That's weird for me. So I had the Benchmade Tangu that I gave a shot to and ended up giving away in my 3,000 subscriber giveaway. Um, and that knife was cool to me in a lot of ways, but uh, there was too much I would like to change about it, and there were some things that just really didn't make it click for me. One of the big issues that I had with it was that it didn't have a pocket clip. So I like traditional pattern knives, especially when they're done in modern materials. I think there's a certain charm to them, but there are certain things that I'm not really willing to make concessions on in terms of a knife that I'll actually use and carry. So this is by all accounts what a modern traditional should be in my opinion thus far. Um, this is just my first impressions. I've carried this knife as of when I'm filming right now um, uh, about a day and a half total whole times that it was like actually in, in pocket. Um, I've played with it a bunch more than that. It's been in my possession for a few days now. I've gotten a little behind on filming with work being a little crazy and also with the number of knives I have in my possession right now that I'm trying to finish up reviews on and make sure I've got all my thoughts concise on and all of that. Um, I just haven't been able to put this in pocket as much as frankly I would really like to because I am kind of crushing on this knife so far. So like I said, being an X-Series, this one is Riat manufactured. It's made in China by Riat and I've had a couple of knives um, that are noteworthy that were made by Riat. The one that I want to talk about the most would be another example of where a designer or a maker, custom maker here in the States has used Riat to make a production version of one of their customs. Um, I had the Sharp by Design Evo Typhoon and that knife was the best production knife, like Chinese production knife, that I had ever experienced. Just really, really good. And that was of course a Sharp by Design design and he worked closely with Riat to make sure that they produced the knife that he really wanted at the end of the day and I've handled and owned quite a few Riat knives every single one of them has been very nice whether you hate China or not I don't care the knives that Riat produces are very good quality a lot of their internal designs however don't really like speak to me much but some of these knives where they work with a U.S. designer, like Sharp by Design, or now with Pina Knives, um, I, I, I really dig <laughs> what's happening here. So Enrique Pina's customs, frankly, are more expensive than I current have a tolerance currently have a tolerance for spending on a knife. But they look incredible, and I haven't been able to handle any of his customs yet, but I've handled a few different of his... Riat manufactured X series knives and this was the first one that really just kind of spoke to me on a level that I felt like I really Needed one at California custom knife show. I got to handle one, but they wouldn't sell it to me They had some knives on the Riat table that were not for sale and the Apaches were some of them The ones they had on the table were fat carbon scales Otherwise, they were identical to this and I wanted one. I would have bought one right there if They would have sold it to me, but they wouldn't um, so there's that but as soon as I got home from California Custom Knife Show, I had already kind of decided if I see one come up that's not outra outrageously marked up, then I'm just going to get one. And then within a couple of days, I saw some for sale. So I picked this one in the OD Green Micarta, and I'm glad that I did. I'm really happy with this knife so far. So I'm just going to go through a couple of tidbits about it. I'm going to keep this relatively short. Um, because I'm, I'm liking it a lot right now. And if I let myself ramble on about how much I like it, I feel like my full review will mostly just be confirming a lot of points that I'll have said in this video. So I'm going to talk about some highlights at the moment, and then I'll try to dive a little deeper when I do my proper full review on it in about a week. So let's talk about the materials real quick. Um, like I said, OD Green Micarta. 
we have titanium bolsters. This would be properly referred to as a bolster lock. So on this side you can see kind of like the frame lock, but it sits under this scale. Um, so titanium up there, it is titanium liners or uh, frame, whatever you want to call it in that way. Titanium pocket clip, which I think looks pretty good. Um, and then we have an M390 blade steel up here on this, what I think would most properly be described as a warning, maybe a reverse tanto. Um, does that look like a tanto if I was holding it that way? Maybe. Um, sheep's foot. I'm going to go with Warncliffe for the moment, but you could probably make a case for any of those. Um, really cool blade shape in my opinion. The method of deployment on this one, there are technically two. So there is a nail nick here, which I have found. Um, it's not like I do it most of the time, but if I use that for my thumb to slow roll the knife out, works great. If I have it in my left hand, I have tried this. We'll see if I can do it on camera. Oh, it was close. You can. <laughs> I'm not doing it very well. For somebody who's left-handed for a lot of things, I'm not good at playing with my knives left-handed. But anyways, you can middle finger flick it um, with your middle finger nail if you're left-handed. But yeah, so there's that nail neck. And then there is, of course, the front flipper. So I really like the way the front flipper tab is done on here. It kind of curves around up and over the top here, over the bolster there. And so you just give that a little flick that way, and it is... Excellent. Um, I have had no issues at all whatsoever with deployment on this knife. What's cool too is a lot of front flippers you kind of pull more literally from the come on focus from the front here, and on this one you still can. Um, that was bad because I'm holding it all weird, but you can pull from lower down and it still works. But up here, kind of like a big lighter is the best way I've found to deploy it reliably every single time. So. Action is amazing on deployment. On closing, it's gotten a little bit, I need to add some KPL in here. I think it's just gotten some pocket lint in it or something. But even then, with this skinny, light little blade, it's not like it has much resistance coming down. Um, so just very smooth overall. And uh, I really, I can't get enough of playing with it. When this knife is in my pocket, or if I'm sitting at my desk and it's here, I just play with it constantly because it's addicting. It's a lot of fun to play with. So yeah, materials are good. Um, the deployment is a lot of fun. Um, look at me, I already started rambling and I didn't even mean to. Um, ergos, I'll dive deep into in the full review, but I have no complaints so far. Not one. They're just, I, I like this knife ergonomically and that's all as specific as I'll be to save time. Um, yeah, pocket clip is pretty good. It's carrying well. I've been carrying it as a secondary. This frankly is too small for me to be what I would consider a primary knife, unless I'm like in slacks going to church or something, then maybe. Um, even then, I'd probably usually just tuck this in another pocket as a secondary. But I've been putting it back left pocket as a secondary. It's been good in that way. Um, the cutting I've done with it so far, it's done very well. It's a very sharp factory edge. Somebody commented on my unboxing video and said they wished it was thinner behind the edge. I mean, sure. Uh, Thinner is rarely a bad thing. There's such a thing as getting too thin, ultimately, for what knives are designed to do, but um, I don't feel that this is too thick behind the edge at all. Um, and as I've cut with it, I've found, I've found that it does pretty well. For being a relatively robust blade stock, and then only having so much height to work with in terms of the grind, it's really like it's done quite well, and I've been pleased with the performance. Um, could it be a little thinner? Maybe, but that's not something that I would have like judged harshly on the knife. If, if nobody had said that, I wouldn't have even thought, like, is it a little thick? Because it doesn't feel too thick to me at all. Um, but maybe his was ground differently than mine somehow. I don't know. Um, so yeah, this knife is just, it's a lot of fun. Um, it might seem like it's kind of atypical for my taste in knives. Um, but it's weird because I feel like I always like aesthetically kind of traditional knives. What I don't like are back locks or slip joints or knives that don't have clips on them. And so a lot of the time when you're looking at a knife that looks like this, it's going to have one of those things. It's going to be a slip joint or a back lock or it's not going to have a clip or 
two out of those three things. You couldn't really be a slip joint and a back lock, but <laughs> it's gonna be some combination of those qualities that I don't like in a knife. So the fact that on here I get a nice bolster lock on bearings with a front flipper and a clip, materials that I love, I mean, it's just, it's very, very good. So first impressions of the Pina X-Series Apache front flipper, it's kind of a mouthful. First impressions of this knife are that it's really, really good, and I'm liking it quite a lot. I imagine my review is going to end up being very positive. I will allow myself to ramble more there and talk about the specifics and the details of kind of how I've gotten here, but this is a sweet little knife, and uh, it makes me want to try more of his work. Um, there's other knives that are also like traditional patterns like this that are kind of front flippers. There's like a sway back one and a clip point one. There's set <clears throat> several different patterns that he has been putting out in this kind of configuration. And then he also has some more standard like kind of frame lock style knives like the Moolah and the Rhino. And um, there's a lot of knives of his that I just haven't tried yet. And now that I like this so much, I want to try more, more Pinas. Um, that's a weird thing to say. I want to try more Pinas that probably, I don't know, maybe it sounded weird to you. Maybe it just sounded weird to me. But I like this. <laughs> Let's go with that. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you on the next one. And uh, it'll be fun then.